Hello everyone, what is up? It is me, Ewan from What Culture Gaming, joined by the brilliant Josh Brown. Thank you, hello. We talk to you today about Jedi Fallen Order. I know we can't stop talking about it, but I did an Easter eggs video the other day, and someone alerted me to the fact that I may have just kind of missed the biggest. Yeah, just biggest, messed it all up, you. Just, yeah, the entire video is trash now, actually. But uh, yeah, I completely missed the biggest, biggest Easter egg in the game. Obviously, major spoilers. If you haven't finished it, I don't want you to get this game spoiled for you, even though EA themselves are now willingly spoiling the big final act in their own adverts of the game. Adverts released. What the hell? That's really annoying, but whatever. Uh, last warning. Basically, Ilum in the game, there was one point where basically your master's lightsaber, Jared Paul's lightsaber, gets crushed in a really creepy voice vision, voice force vision on Dathomir, and you have to go to Ilum which is the place where all the Jedi get their kyber crystals from. It's a really great thing that people will be familiar with, having watched the 2003 Clone Wars show, and then later the uh, 2008 one as well. In fact, the entire environment is mapped out as it is in the show, which is really, really cool. Uh, and basically, you go there, you get your split part lightsaber, but the first time you go, you really, the, the actual cutscene that you're treated to in the Mantis Lands, it's really dark, you don't actually see what's going on. And then other people have pointed out that previous theories is that Elim could potentially be Starkiller based. Now, this is the real zinger. Once you finish Fallen Order and go back to Elim, you are treated to a massive image of the planet with a big old middle chunk of the uh -huh. actual belt, I want to say, taken out. And that looks just like Starkiller Base. There's been loads of theories going on for, for years, Josh, that the two are linked, because I think in the Legends continuity that Ilum was located in the same place where Starkiller Base is now. And yeah, it certainly looks as though the two planets are the same. Please explain this to me, Ewan. What are the implications of this? Because you told me about 10 minutes before we jumped in to start recording, and it blew my mind. I Josh, looked up Ilum. Josh, 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 I missed the biggest thing. Please. Starkiller, come on. <laughs> They're one of the same. Yeah, I didn't notice the belt immediately, and I was kind of thinking, how the hell did I miss this but obviously in the game when you first arrive there's a big snowstorm going on you can barely see anything but how do these two things happen what yes. how does this turn into this you and i'm really confused i am one of those star wars fans who actually doesn't jump into the wider universe so i am very ignorant on this front but i'm representing all of those people who are just like me who think this is a huge deal <laughs> and it's blown my mind and i'm just trying to figure out how it all fits together it's okay we'll Thank get you. through this together uh actually the answer is we don't know oh, and that's the really interesting part but uh, it's interesting because obviously starkiller base we thought that you know that's the first order's base at the time of the force awakens you know it's a massive big planet Death Star. And this raises loads of interesting implications, because if the Empire were there on Ilum mining kyber crystals, and we saw a similar thing in Rogue One when they were on Jeddah mining kyber crystals from that planet, it goes to show that they were always thinking about kyber crystals as a weapon. Uh, and I would be curious to see if maybe them hollowing out that middle belt was part of their plans to actually maybe that the Starkiller base is a design that actually is much older than we all originally think maybe they had different plans for doomsday weapons and the death star was the one they finally landed on mm -hmm. either that or that's actually just how the plant naturally occurs but you know when you're actually on the ground at Ilum, that bit after you get the split part lightsaber and go out and massacre all the troopers and you've got all the really heroic music playing if you look down there's a valley that looks almost just like the trench run from the force awakens when poe and the rest of the x-wings go in to destroy the uh, the actual base itself so Maybe that does imply that the Empire had been, you know, as we, we see when you go there, they've got their own presence on there. That does maybe confirm that they're actually, they were the first ones to make Ilum Starkiller Base, which is interesting in itself. I would love that. That, that. that idea of transforming something that is supposed to be so, like, you know, so pure linked to Jedi and then transforming it into a literal planet killer weapon, like, the process of that could also explain how kind of the First Order got so powerful in the first place. Mm -hmm. If they're mining such a, you know, powerful planet associated, like, with the Force and with Jedi, and they've sort of transformed that and bastardized that to create the super weapon for me at least, explains like just how they managed to amass such power in such short amount of time after the fall of the Empire. I'm really curious, Josh, because I want to know whether or not this is very deliberate. I don't think we've been in a position where Disney have actually confirmed whether or not they are the same planets, but I feel as though the evidence has mounted up so much so in the past few weeks that it's kind of impossible to think of it as anything but Starkiller Base. I'm very curious to see the reason why they haven't confirmed on it is if it because it could play a pivotal role in a sequel or expanded universe material. I think there's definitely options there. I would be surprised maybe if the next Fallen Order game is about, you know, Cal and uh, and and Merrin and Grease and Seer actually, you know, looking at the precursor to the Death Star. Maybe that's what they they go back to Ilum and they're thinking about, okay, maybe, maybe Seer needs to get her own lightsaber now and they go back to Ilum and she starts creating one and then you actually look and think, hang on, 
what is actually going on here? And that might be an interesting plot for another Star Wars game. Obviously, you know, we don't want to just rehash of Rogue One where you've got a different thing, but this is the, the, the killer planet thing before the killer planet thing came along. But maybe that is the reason why it's only teased yeah, here. Yeah, I think so. Because when it comes to sort of Elm and Starkiller Base in kind of general, there is so much story, I, I feel, untapped there. Like mm -hmm. so many opportunities to explore that and fill it out into something much bigger because from what at least I've seen in The Force Awakens, it was kind of, you know, an excuse to have another Death Star, whereas there is, there is all this mythology to it if it is linked to Ilum and everything that came before it. And like you said, I do think it would potentially act as a great sort of jumping off point for a Fallen Order 2 because there is, there is story there to be told. There are mm. bridges to be made and I want to see, I don't know about you, but when it comes to sort of Fallen Order 2, I do want to see uh, Cal and the and the gang, Cal and the gang, Cal and the gang, um, sort of continued, and we could maybe bridge that gap between the mm -hmm. sort of you know the original trilogy and the sequel trilogy that little bit more, and that could be a great piece of connective tissue to link the two worlds. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of torn on the whole thing because obviously there is a, as we said before the game came out, there is inevitability to almost the failure of this mission. You know, Luke Skywalker and Leia are meant to be the two last hopes of the Rebellion and the Jedi in the original trilogy. So when you have more Jedi going around the galaxy, or not quite Jedi as in the case of the Soka after, you know, she kind of leaves behind the Jedi Temple in the, in the Clone Wars, you do kind of, you lessen the significance of those films and you don't want that. I think Lucasfilm want that. So there is potentially a hint there that maybe they'll go away and explore the galaxy themselves. Maybe there's more Force-sensitive, you know, ancient cultures like the Zephyr out there to explore. Maybe that's something they do. But I do think maybe if they have a trilogy of them going up against the Empire and then the third thing is where it all collapses, maybe that's yeah. what they could do. Either that, or we go all the way into the sequels, kind of like what Battlefront 2 did, where you had uh, that game set after Return of the Jedi, and you had the DLC which focused on Idem Versio in the build-up to The Force Awakens, where they kind of bridged it that way. Maybe we'll get an old bearded Cal. I know Scott I was desperate this. for that, so yeah. I want that very much. I want to see Cal sort of grow into kind of like the mentorish figure, or at mm. least sort of like an old Ben version of what he is now. I think that would be like really interesting. I like the idea that moving forward, because even though you know it's quite dark, the ending of Fallen Order is is ultimately quite a heroic one. Mm -hmm. You know, they destroy the holocron. Yes, they destroy the holocron. You got the dark leave, name right. They, I got the dark name. Thank God. <laughs> uh, they destroy that and obviously leave the destiny of these young, force-sensitive children mm -hmm. to know they're not going to draft them into a child army or anything like that. Yeah, that's a good thing. But I like the idea of adding tragedy to that because perhaps Cal could have been the one to you know lead the Empire to Ilum in the first mm. place, and that resulted in you know the rise of like potentially the First Order. After the fact, I don't know. There is a mm. there's a lot of time between you know the end of Revenge of the Sith and between A New Hope where this takes place, obviously, and yes. then the start of the sequel trilogy. But if, like you said, if there was something going on there potentially the whole time, it was indirectly caused by potentially you in a video game that is canon. Mm. I'd like that very much. I want some more mwah, mwah, tragedy in this video. I know. So what a terrifying legacy, poor Cal Kestis. <laughs> BD One's just there. Like, what have we done? What have we done? <laughs> One thing that I'm curious about though, because I'm definitely here. I think you know. Respawn have done a great thing by assembling such a great cast of characters. I'm curious to see maybe there are anthology-esque applications towards what they've done with this game. I wouldn't mind a Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order game that is a prequel where you play Master Tapal during the Clone Wars, for instance. I think that would be interesting. Obviously, that takes away somewhat from the customization aspects, but maybe we could have an anthology kind of type application here going on, not just having something that's you know going to follow on from the seat from the first game. Even though I definitely want to see that, but maybe there are ten there are potential for little nice little uh, almost Arkham Origins s spin offs or prequels yeah. that they could do with what Respawn have got here because it's such a solid template, you know, amalgamated from like Dark Souls and Uncharted and Tomb Raider. So it seems a shame to not have, you know, to have that go to waste when you've got so many different cool errors to explore. I agree. For, for me, the best thing about Fallen Order was sort of the world it built, not only in the context of the story that was actually happening, but the, the wider world and how it fitted into sort of like the movies and the wider um, stories and stuff. And I do think there are so many characters that are introduced that are so Ripe for exploration, we get some of their backstory within the game. But if you you could you could more or less pick out any single character except maybe Grease. Even then, I'd have a Grease game and just, just sort of salt build and, just salt, and, <laughs> yeah, just salt, salt this food and then build a game around them. Like you said, um, you know we've got like sort of Sia and sort of her relationship with Triller and that. That mm -hmm. is that was so cool. That was my favorite part of the game. I'm just rambling now because I love Triller as a character <sighs> and now I'm sad. You know. Too. I've, right, I've literally just said I want a, a, a Jar to Pole prequel, but maybe the game that we're really after is a Sierra and, and Triller game. Because maybe. then, you know, they never actually, I don't believe they show Triller's, um, 
you know, Jedi lightsaber before she gets turned. So maybe that's enough. You could keep the customization for that potentially. I'd be definitely be down for that. I mean, we already know for a fact that loads of expanded universe material will come in, you know, comics, novels. Obviously, there was a Jedi Temple prequel comic, which is all about um, Seer when she was, uh, you know, Cordova's Padawan. So there's so much potential for exploration with what Respawn have done here. And the whole fact that Ilum could be Starkiller base just goes to show that it's all connected and it has its own place in the Skywalker saga, which I think is really cool. I, I love this, right? Because like I said at the beginning, I'm not one, I've, I've usually kept away from sort of like the expanded universe mm -hmm. stuff because I've always been worried that it would never feel real enough. And that sounds stupid, but I've always had difficulty trying to slot that in with my, with the things I already know about mm -hmm. Star Wars and the movies I've watched over and over again. But to me, this fit so effortlessly that it's made me want to jump off and explore yeah, the stuff that yeah, Disney do. and uh, watch the Clone Wars doing right fact, now. Watch, 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 watch my editorial yeah. on, on what culture's main YouTube channel about uh, Star Wars Dark Disciples the best Clone Wars novel ever that you should all go watch and then read. I'm not going to read it, but I'm going to watch your video and then okay. pretend I have so I can get those sweet, sweet dots. Sweet on nerd the cloud. That's all I need. That's all I'm here for, to be honest. Let us know what nerd clout you have down in the comments below and what your thoughts are on Ilum being Starkiller Base confirmed. Hashtag confirmed. I don't Hashtag know. It's, confirmed. it's not it's not been confirmed, it but it's confirmed. It's, it's confirmed. Okay, but yeah, once you're doing that, please show a like, share, and subscribe and head back on over to whatculture.com forward slash gaming for more news lists and articles like this every day. You can follow me on Twitter at you. Moon Things you follow Josh on Twitter at Josh Broom with two R's. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Still haven't gotten my death sticks. Ilum is Starkiller Base. You don't need death sticks anymore. Here we go.